Hello, this is Tofan Trifold Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you you can apply clay material to uh, any model in Blender by using the Clay Doh 4 asset library. Uh, now, it's not free, you have to pay for it, it's around $35. But for what it can do, what it has to offer, it's not such a bad price. It saves a lot of time in the long run. Uh, works in Blender 4.4 only apparently, but I've applied it or installed it in 4.1. And it does work, it does tend to crash here and there, but it's more stable on 4.4. It renders in EV and in Cycles, but Cycles obviously is better, more realistic results. Uh, and it works on models that have been UV unwrapped and those that have not been UV unwrapped. And I'll leave a link of it below the video so you guys can try it yourselves and download it. Uh, but it will come in a zip folder. Let me go back here. So you double click on that into its own folder. You unzip it actually to its own folder. I'm going to double click there. Uh, left click, right click, copy. Now show how to install an asset library in Blender is still the same process. Go to edit, preferences, and go to file paths. I've already done it. I'm doing it again for the sake of the tutorial. Click on the plus button, left click, control V, enter, double click, add asset library, and it's ready to go. Now we're going to divide a window up. When you hover your mouse over any corner in Blender, when it turns into crosshairs, left click and drag over, that divides the window. Click on that icon, asset library, clay dough, and here it is. We're going to leave our cube in there as our, uh, for our tutorial. And keep in mind when it comes to these uh, icons on the thumbnails, on the presets, for the most part, this icon means material, as you can tell from the material tab option in Blender. Scroll down. This means no setup for the most part. Let's say for the most part, because sometimes it does apply to it, sometimes it doesn't for this add on, this uh, asset library. This means collection. Okay, so that's keep that in mind. I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'll go through as much as I can just to give you a, a feel for how the add on is. And let's see, let's uh, change our viewport here. Let's left click on that icon. Uh, click it from EV. Or change it from EV to Cycles, CPU to GPU. And our samples are window click, click on that and run to 8, enter. I'm going to scroll over with our mouse wheel and click on the view shading option and left click on that. And let's change our world view from that gray color to a lighter sky blue color. And then we're set. So let's start from the top. I'm going to click on bubblegum, left click and drag. And all of these, you have to left click and drag into the windows to have them activated, to have them, or to use them. Uh, let's stick. Let's go to. Let's go stick with bubblegum. Left click and drag onto our cube there. Let go, and there we go. That's our cube with the bubblegum texture or material applied to it. And for some reason, for 4.4, it takes a little bit longer for it to render out. Other versions of Blender. It renders out faster, especially when you do your GPU. But for some reason, with 4.4, it takes a little bit longer. But we can see our bubblegum material there. And our options for changing the way this looks from the material tab, left click on that. You can see we have a lot of options here to change. You can change the color. Right now it's pink. Turn it green, blue, yellow, would you, whatever you prefer. Uh, global texture, you can change that. The roughness, the higher on the roughness scale, the more matted and less glossy it looks. If you pull this down, it has a more of a glossy look to it, a glossy appearance you can tell from the white sheen on the material. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can increase the bump, global bump, left click and drag this up, adds more bump to it, global displacement. Um, texture mapping is animated also, left click on that, you can animate it. Verona, I can change that. The fingerprints, so let's left click on that from the drop down menu. You can tell that the uh, finger color is white. If you left click on that, we can turn it to green or blue. But you can tell, you can see that it doesn't seem to have much of an effect on the end result. So to have it uh, influenced more in terms of the color that we've just chosen, click on this parameter, left click and drag this over. 
And as we do that, this becomes more of a bluish color. I'm just gonna change it any color you want. Red, uh, purple. Let's take with red, that really stands out. The red stands out quite a bit. Uh, the finger dents, you can change that to make those more or less. The finger bump, bump style. It's all there, you can change. It has a lot of uh, parameters you can adjust and customize to what the way you want it to look. You can adjust the cracks, the stones, so on and so forth. So that's really nice. Now if we scroll down, let's go to the next section, which would be the node groups. And to use these, for the most part, uh, let's go to this setup here first. This would be more appropriate to use for this tutorial. Let's divide our window up again. Let's click and drag down. And click on that icon there and go to Shade Editor. Let's get rid of this. Left click and drag. You can see our node setup here. So we're going to left click and drag. Let's go down to Dirt Node. Left click and drag this up. And it gives us our node group there. Once your node group is highlighted in 4.4, 4. it's outlined in white. So we're going to press G, move this up. There's a fly on my microphone. I don't know where these flies are coming from. I guess it's because it's close to summer. But let's uh, press G and pull this up. And let's left click on that and press G and pull this out a little bit. We're going to mix these two together. Press Shift A on our keyboard. Go to Shader and click on let me see where's mix Just mix somewhere in here shift a again let me do that again um there it is mix shader left click on that we're going to hover this over that green line to connect it and we're going to left click and drag this shader let's scroll up a little bit on our mouse wheel left click and drag on the green node shader to this shader and it's added an equal amount of the bubblegum node plus the dirt node. So if you want more bubblegum or more dirt on your model, left click and drag in the factor aspect. If you left click and drag it towards the left, it gives us more bubblegum. Uh, left click and drag it towards the right, it gives us more dirt. So that works very well. Uh, let's see what else we have to look at here. Let's join this back together. Hover your mouse over that line there, right click, and then press join up, and it joins it. So let's press one on our keyboard and drag this over. And let's look at this text here. If we left click and drag this over, it gives us a text here. And some of the parameters for the material obviously are in this aspect of it. So if we want to change this to, right now it's like a peach color. Left click there, turn to red, blue, green. Let's stick with blue. I can change the roughness of it as I said before, glossy to the left, not so glossy to the right. And the same parameters for the most part that were for the material tab, for the materials that we chose in the beginning are the same here. If you want to change the text itself and the style, click on this modifiers tab and then text left click there and let's type in uh, good day to you all enter and there we have it we have our text there which pretty much typed out what we typed out in the text field there you can change the font style here also right now it's cute dino lobster or luckiest guy or pacifico you can change the size of it here word spacing lining and the good thing about this too is animated also left click on play and then it shakes it's animated so that's pretty cool another thing I want to look at here also would be these eyes I want to show you guys the eyes because the eyes are animated also so left click and drag here and then press 7 on our keyboard to look at the top of it and then we press play the eyes they blink automatically so you don't have to try to animate just yourself. They're already animated, which is great. And as you can tell from the collection here, there are different kinds of uh, pupils or eye styles here. So if we have that still selected and we go to the modifier tab, you can see in this parameter, we have clay here or circle. Sorry, we can turn it to ring, cross, cat, spiral, 
and you can adjust the size of it, the depth, the bulge. Uh, sclera, you can adjust that also right now as white, left click in there, you can turn it to red, blue, green, uh, pupil also, change the color of that, whatever you want, uh, a bright red, so it, it's highly customizable, you can adjust the blink animation, right now it's on autom automatic, turn to manual to, to uh, animate yourselves, so it, it has a lot of great options here. And there's one more thing I wanted to actually uh, showcase and press one on my keyboard, drag this over again, and that's this pot. So left click and drag this over. We have our pot here. And to adjust the way the pot looks, all you have to do is press tab with your pot selected. Press tab on your keyboard and it has these bezier curves. That's all this is, just bezier curves. So if you select the middle of that bezier curve uh, line there, press the generate keyboard, you can pull this out. Same thing here, G, pull this out. Press one tip of it, click on your move gizmo, pull this out, in. So yeah, so this is a little a nice, nice, well thought out uh, asset library. You can do a lot with it. So like I said before, this is just an introduction to the add-on. Um, we haven't gone over all this stuff yet, but this is just to give you an idea of what the add-on can do. And it's, it's pretty nice. So uh, once again, you guys can download yourselves and hopefully you, uh, you've enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, once again, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Alright, adios.